Hey, Rye, here we are again today on another episode of The Lifeguards. Yeah, yeah! We're going to be talking about stress and control and what stuff do we control. I don't know, do you ever feel like you don't have control of something or you're out of control? All the time. All the time, great. <laughs> well, let's get into it. So Ryan, let me tell you what happened to me this week. Uh, with our van, we drive a big 15 passenger van uh, with all my kids and I'm driving down the road and lights start blinking and flashing on my dashboard. That's like one of my worst nightmares. It's, one, one of. Yeah, it's not good. I'm terrible with all mechanically inclined things. So I see that and I'm like, uh, that pit of your stomach falls. What am I going to do? Sorry, go ahead. What's this going to cost me? Yeah, well, I don't know what the problem is, and I and of course you're imagining it's the worst. Right, right. Well, this was just brake lights flashing, so you know, <laughs> uh, worse. You just smash into someone or it something, seems, drive off the. I road. think they're important. They are. So, uh, so the lights are flashing. I'm like, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Uh, a few years ago, I had something happen in one of my other vehicles that I thought was similar, and it was just because there was a loose wire somewhere that was connecting and disconnecting. So. I got home and I checked under the van to see if I could see what was loose in the van or something. Another thing I would never do. You wouldn't. Well, you wouldn't even check. No. Oh. <laughs> Get under the van and look for something. No way. <laughs> if if the light was if the wire was blinking and flashing and saying "fix me," I wouldn't find it. Okay. But, well, but I I'm did. impressed that you were even. Well, thinking thank you. I, you could do. I that. don't That's claim awesome. to be a mechanic either, but I, if I can try to fix it, I guess I try. But. So I'm looking under the van and I do notice a problem. I don't find a loose wire, but I notice a drip of oil coming off the bottom of my engine. That's never good. And we're getting ready to do a trip in a couple days here. We're drive for like six hours. So I thought I better make sure I have oil in my engine if I'm going to do that. So I check my oil. I pull out the dipstick to see what oil is in there. Uh, I told someone the other day it was one dipstick. Check another dipstick. <laughs> So I'm looking for oil, and I don't find any oil. There's no oil in the van. Oh, no. So I fill it back up and check it, and it's good, and I didn't blow up my engine, so that's good. But so, all that, good, so good news that you had a bright light. That's the moral of the story here, is you see something that you think is a bad situation, and it turns into a good situation. I still have to figure out that problem. But Are the brakes operational yet? The brakes are, the brakes are working fine. So. Okay. So that's not a problem. Just ignore that flashy light. But <laughs> just it'll go like away. Like in like in They never go away on their own. Like though. in Madagascar where they, they have that the, they're flying in the plane that's on fire. One of the engines is on fire. The penguin. And he's like, "Yeah, what what is that? What is that flashy light?" And he's like, "Stop that light." They just crack, they just break the light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's a Maybe I'll try that. I'll, just break the light. I'll, that'll fix the problem. <laughs> So yeah, anyways, the, it, good came from bad, so to speak, uh, as far as the lights flashing and it led me to discover that I was totally out of oil and, yeah. you know, that would have been You could have seized up your engine. More and expensive to get a new, a new engine, engine or a new, new car. Van, yeah. Right, right, versus, versus just having a light that flashed. So it got me thinking about control and we think that we're in control of things. We're, we're probably not in as much control as we think. We, we are not in as much control as we think we are. We could drop dead of no a heart way. attack in 10 seconds, yeah. you know? And so lots of things are out of control. But I think people like to stay in control, right? Yeah. We have a... Yeah, I love me some control. Yeah, I think we all do, <laughs> right? We are... You hear so much on the news and in society and culture today about mental illness, mm. worry, anxiety, fear, mm -hmm. depression, all these things. And is it because people are feeling that we're, we're out of control? Is it that we don't have control of the scenario around us? We're getting all these inputs of things, typically bad things happening all over the world. Yeah. We can't control, we can't do anything about what's happening in Ukraine or what's happening in South America or anywhere, but we're getting all these inputs of bad things happening. and All the time, from various sources, like all the time. Just buzzing the phone, sending stuff unsolicited information about the next hor horrific thing sure that's going on it's flinging by on the there's billions of people tape. all over the earth and there's a bunch of them are having a really bad day today. right 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 i heard john eldridge i think on an interview once he said something like we have village-sized souls mm. so he was talking about all these inputs we're getting 
from around the world. We were not made to process all of that. We were before, you know, That's interesting. I don't, 150 years ago, like radio, newspaper, maybe the printing press newspaper when you started to hear more international. But before that, for like 5,000 years, you knew what was going on in your community. Right. <laughs> maybe a few hours away or someone comes through town that's a traveler and tells you something. Yeah. And it just got me thinking about... Um, yeah, a village-sized soul. Like we were made to handle that's such the, an interesting idea. The inputs of the people around us mm -hmm. and the relationships around us, but we were not necessarily created to handle all the bad news of all the world all the time, mm -hmm. which is where we are today. So I was just on on the idea of control. There are very few things we can control. There are many things we cannot control. Right. And so, how do we? deal with that how do we process that and not get worked up about it or not worry about it well i think about like anxiety you know a couple years ago if you would have asked me ryan are you ever anxious i would say no and then <clears throat> the more i've had people talk to me about anxiety and, and their and their anxiety and what they feel and what it feels like and i got um some other language, like one of the phrases um, that I've heard and that I use is um, overstimulated. Mm. And I think that's such an interesting, you know, phrase that I feel overstimulated. And I think to what you're saying, that's exactly what you're talking about is that we, we're not God. We, we don't have the capacity to handle billions of people's problems. Mm and hear and receive all of that terrible news when it's terrible and horrific and devastating. And then you've got all the highs and the joys and, you know, the, the wonderful moments and, and just, you know, receiving all that. We just, like you said, like we're not designed to do that, but overstimulation can be sound, light. You know, I can be overstimulated uh, you know, even with my kids, you know, the four kids are running around the house and, you know, one's got a, um, one of those, uh, hoverboards. Are, yeah. One of the hoverboards and the battery's low and that beep starts beep, beep, beep. And it's not, no, it isn't beep. like, it's not consistent. No, it's, it's random. That's right. That's it's, what it's, makes it's it worse. Beep. beep. And it's, and you're, and I'm like trying to do something and you know, you always do like, you try to do the gracious thing. Like you're like, don't, I'm not going to say anything. It'll stop. Like they'll be done in like 30 seconds and then it goes again and then again. And then you're just like, what are you guys doing? Somebody please turn off the bee bag. And you're just like, oh my gosh. But it could be anything that you're overstimulated by. And I definitely feel overstimulation at times uh, and anxiety I've heard, you know, the definition is is really you're you're pre-playing through worst case scenarios before they happen, whether there's a probability or not. And they're probably not gonna happen. And it they may, mostly don't happen. It may never happen. It's you have a ten percent chance of it happening, but your mind is just like rolling through it. What if dot 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 and you're going through worst case scenarios? And I felt myself through those thoughts elevate my stress all of a sudden. Mm. I mean, this is, I'm in a safe place doing fun things. And then my mind all of a sudden is pre-playing a little mini film in my head of my wife dying, <laughs> Have, you know, all of these things like pre-playing out uh, that, you know, th I'm not in a situation where that's likely. Right. Um, and well, and it's robbing you. You just said wonderful moments a few yes, minutes ago. Exactly. You're not. It's robbing you of the wonderful moments you should be partaking of. Right. In the present, it's stealing my joy. Right. And my peace. Right. Yeah. For something that is fictional and very unlikely. <laughs> and unlikely. Yeah. And so. And even if it seems likely, there's always another way. I mean, there's all. There's always something that you haven't thought of yet that can turn the table. You know. And so I think we got to get out of, we got to direct those thoughts and kind of, you know, the phrase, take, take those thoughts captive or, you know, you, you can't do the whole, like, don't think about the banana thing, but you can go to something else 
and go to a truth, go to a place of, you know, this is what brings me joy. This is what I'm thankful for. Count your blessings, um, you know, read some scripture, pray, listen to some, you know, uh, calming music, whatever it is, Just get outside, get off the screens. That's the other thing. Screens for me, you know, the social media uh, platforms are addictive. Mm-hmm. And they're made that way. They, by design, they are addictive. And so when I do start doing that, like little swipe thing, I'm swiping and I, I get a little dopamine hit on that little video, that little 30 second, oh, look, this is about Denzel Washington. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, cool. And then the next one. Oh yeah. And then, the, and then I find myself standing in my closet <laughs> or some random place looking at my phone. I'd be, I'm like, you know, I just... I'm, I'm just, I'm captivated. Yes, yes. And what is it By doing? It's not, it's not making me more peaceful. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's bringing me dopamine, but it's not bringing me true joy. Mm-hmm. I'm like addicted. And so we have to find times and ways to like disengage. I heard another phrase, uh, slowing, you know, where you're doing intentional things to slow down. Uh, like one of the suggestions was... Um, like you park in the furthest parking space. Yes, I don't know where I read this, but it was <laughs> for a while. I would go to the longest checkout line. That's right. That's that, go that, to the that longest checkout yeah, line. Was in that book. Just yeah. to, to slow down. Right. Slow down and don't take your phone. Yeah. And don't be on your phone. Yeah. Like just be in the long line. Pick the long line, and look around and talk to the people and like be present as a practice. Be of present. Slowing. Yeah. yeah. Be present. Yeah. That's good. Um. The, uh, when you were talking about <laughs> just wherever you happen to be in your closet or just leaning against the wall, scrolling through your phone, my oldest daughter, uh, Annabelle is very good at, what are you looking at dad? And usually my answer is <laughs> nothing. Cause it really is the end mindless scroll that I'm yeah. looking at. Oh yeah. What are you doing? What are you looking at dad? Nothing. Put my phone away. So I appreciate, you know, maybe that's a tool is to have your. There have been times where I've told my kids, if you see me on my phone, take it away. I give oh, yeah. you permission to take it out of my hand, which was very, became very annoying. Respectfully. <laughs> Respect- yeah. Give yeah. me the phone. Yeah. When your six-year-old just kind of out of nowhere, is just like, <laughs> Jack your phone. it's yeah. gone. But it was, I was at a point where I was like, I need to have external boundaries. Accountability. Like, accountability. Yeah. We all need accountability. Yeah, for sure. All right, so we've been talking a little bit about control, stress, feeling anxiety, some of these things. Are there practical tools, maybe if someone's watching or listening today, things that you've that have helped you, uh, Rye, that to deal with some of these things? What what are some practical tools someone could do? Yeah, and so first of all, just as a reminder for everybody, we're not doctors, counselors. We don't play them on TV. Um, not but, yet. So we're just a couple of regular guys. So from my own personal uh, perspective. Sometimes what I find is number one is turn media off Mm. and I like to fill the space and I think stop filling the space would be maybe number two or connected to, to turn media off. And cause I think I've been talking to people all day. I've been interacting with clients. I've been interacting with team members. I've been, uh, you know, coaching, counseling, um, you know, helping people, um, inspiring people, correcting people, looking at numbers, you know, I've been engaged, engaged, yeah, yeah. engaged, engaged. And so now inputs and outputs. Yeah. Right? And I'm, we're rolling We're I'm working out my mind and my mouth and all that. And then all of a sudden I don't have to do that at the same level. I'm, I'm coming home or I'm, you know, and what do I want to do? Turn something on. I want to, I want to veg out. I want to be entertained. I want to get that dopamine hit. And as much as that does feel good in the moment, I don't think that that's uh, what you want to do all the time. You want to have those moments because then I start to feel overstimulated. I start to feel a little overwhelmed. So I find, you know, number one, just turn the media off, go outside, Mm. get, I mean, I believe we were, and listen, I'm the first to admit, like, I do not love the sun. You've seen the clothing that I wear. (laughs) in sunny scenarios. I mean, I am... I don't know how a guy could wear long sleeves and a hood I'm, and I am a head, I like, am a head to toe covered kind of guy. I don't like being in the sun. It's not good. I'm fair skinned and blue eyed and all that. But I'm telling you, I believe that, that we were made to be outside. We, we, are, we have to be outside. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so for me, 
uh, that might just be go outside without your phone, without your technology, and just sit and be present. Look at the water. Go find a beautiful you know, place to look or enjoy um, by yourself, with your family, whatever. Grab a kid or your wife or spouse or whatever and, and, and just go be somewhere and enjoy nature and, and enjoy creation and, and all those things. Um, and then a, a second thing might be... Um, okay, I think you're on a third thing here. Turn uh, media off, go outside. Third. Tur- okay, thanks. Turn media off, go outside, and then third... Um, I would say, I, I don't want to get into like uh, too much on like the diet side, but obviously we are, I believe we're mind, body, and spirit. And mm. so I think there's, you know, the, the mind component, we've talked about that on the media engagement. I think the body part is y- you need to be exercising. If you're not, if you don't have an active lifestyle, if you're not doing a lot of things, I think you, you got to be working your body. Our bodies, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it. And so we got to stay um, fit, mm. whatever that means for you. Mm-hmm. That's not a weight. That's not a size or pant size or whatever. Um, that's whatever's healthy for you. But you need to be exercising and, and working your body. Um, and then I think, you know, again, the third thing on the spiritual side is just, you know, uh, prayer, scripture, meditation, just sort of, you know, being being present, just being quiet, being still, which is so hard for me. I mean, I like to talk. I, I think like it's hard move. for everyone. Uh, maybe not. Maybe a quiet, introverted person, it's I easy. Mean, I feel like the, the monks are maybe really good at it. Mm-hmm. They seem like that's, you know, I know that's a stereotypical, you know, um, but they're just, yeah. I mean, and I, I sit for like 90 seconds and I'm like, ah! um, but yeah, so mind, body, spirit, I'd kind of think about those things, but back to the diet part on the body, you know, if you're eating a bunch of sugar and carbs, which is my absolute favorite thing to eat, um, it's probably not great for you. Right. And so look at what your diet, you know, uh, is and, and find that protein, you know, really make sure you're having enough protein. And, um, and again, talk to your doctor. And I also, last thing is I think everybody needs a little couch time. Uh, so if you haven't met with a counselor, um, someone that you trust to kind of process through some things. Oh, all, that's what you mean by couch time. By couch like time. Like talk to a counselor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, again, if, if I was going to see someone, I'd want someone that shares my faith. Um, uh, so we're on the same playing field sure. of ideas and, and things. Um, but yeah, having a professional that can kind of pro- help you process through some past wounds. We all have wounds. We all have scars. We all have things we've been through. And, um, it's important to talk about those things. Those things can, you know, you cover them up and they, like we talked about before, they just keep, just keep welling up. Mm. So there's, there's a few. All right, what, so, what about so you? Let, let me recap what you okay. said. Turn media off go outside, exercise your body, mind, spirit, yeah. exercise your whole self, not just physical exercise. Yeah. And along with that, you could add in the food, like your diet. Right, right. Like think about your diet and what, what are you consuming? And fourth, couch time, talk to someone, talk to a professional Yeah, that, that might be able to give some insight. So there's there's four things, how to deal with stress or anxiety. Okay. So here's a few, a few tips. things. Those are a few tips. That's not exhaustive. Right. That have worked for you. Yeah. Uh, here's some things I have done or I have uh, so I'm, I told you I'm reading this book uh, by Craig Grishel called Winning the War in Your Mind. Uh-huh. And at the end of the first chapter, he has a spot to write out the lies that you're thinking about. So oh, that's good. The lie that you're going to, your brakes are going to fail and you're going to drive off the road and yeah. kill your whole family. Right. Okay. Well, your, that, your wife's going to die tomorrow. Your whatever. wife's going to die. Yeah, yeah. These, these doom and gloom scenarios we create in our mind. Mm-hmm. Replace that lie with a truth, mm. the truth. And that can be scripture. That's so That good. can be, it can just be a, a truth like I love my wife and we're going to enjoy a long life together. Yeah. Just so you got to think about something. So yeah. why think about the doom and gloom when you can yeah. think about. So, so that's the first thing. Uh, replace your lies with a truth. That's good. The second thing, uh, it's along the same lines, but to be intentional, think about what you're thinking about. Like mm. we have the ability to choose our thoughts. Yeah. We can choose to think about this, the green leaf of this plant. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to stop thinking about that and I'm going to think about, you know, what, what we're talking about here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have the ability to think about our thoughts. So think about what you're thinking about yeah. and direct that. So along the same line. That's good. I like, just real quick on that. I just, I like the idea of thinking about what you're thinking about. I, I like that because you're, you're paying attention to the thoughts that are happening because we do become what we believe. Mm-hmm. I mean, we do, we will orient ourselves towards the thing that we're focused on and we're thinking about and we're speaking. Then you start speaking it. 
that's a whole nother plane. Right. Because you're, you're speaking stuff. Right. right? That's, there's power in that. And you're hearing yourself say it. And so, you know, we love listening to ourselves sometimes. Um, not, not all of us love our voices, but it, there's a power in hearing yourself speak something like that. And so if, if you're speaking the wrong thing, I'm a loser. I'm, you know, uh, I'm not capable. I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough. You know, whatever it is, and you're speaking that lie, you believe it. You start to believe it and you start to orient your life. You start making decisions based on that. So, um, it, I read somewhere once that you can't keep, uh, you can't keep birds from flying over your head, but you can prevent them from building a nest in your hair. Mm. And it was related to thoughts like you may not be able to keep a thought from passing through your mind, right? but Invasive, you can stop right. it from meditating on it and thinking about it That's and so replaying good. it yeah. and saying That's it really and good. building that yes. nest in your mind. So, so yeah. Um, replace lies with truth. Think about what you're thinking about you. I thought you were going to go here, but having a rest time, like we were created for rest yeah. and there've been periods in my life where Sundays was no phone days. I would put my, turn my phone off, put it in a mm. cupboard, put it away. That sounds good. Intentional. That sounds hard rest. by the way. It does. And it was hard. <laughs> And, uh, these days I've been trying to not look at social media or any, uh, yeah, any social media on Sundays, just that's a thing to rest from. That's good. Um, so take a time to rest. Like we were created, even when God made the earth, he took a day to rest. Yeah. And so if he needs rest, we need rest and he's told us to take rest. So yeah. let's step into that. And maybe part of the problem we're in a pandemic of mental health and stress and problems is because we're not taking that time to rest. Well, and so on the rest front, even at night, we're not resting. Right, right. We're not sleeping. And we're not sleeping for the right amount of time, whatever that is. And that's different for everybody too, but it's probably not four hours. You know, I know there's some people who can operate on low levels sure, of sleep, sure. but they're exceptions. You know, m most of the stuff that I've heard, most people need around eight hours. Yeah. So maybe you're a seven, maybe you're a six and a half hour person, maybe you're eight and a half, but... It's not two no, or three or four. Yeah. And then you're jacked up on caffeine and sh well, again, sugar and whatever it is that's keeping you up on the next, you know, propping you up the next day. But we really need rest and rest, deep sleep, regenerative sleep does so many. And I don't know what it does because I'm not a doctor or a rocket ship launcher. But, you know, you talk to those smart people, they'll tell you it does so all sorts of chemical neuron things in your brain, which is going to help you the next day in your thoughts. And the exact things you're talking about. Yeah. So nighttime rest is super important as well. So hopefully if you're watching or listening, uh, you know, some tools that could help you with stress, turn media off, go outside, do exercise, watch your diet, talk to someone, a couch time professional, replace lies with truth, mm -hmm. think about what you're thinking about and take some time to rest. Rest is important. So hopefully that helps you guys. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for joining us on the Lifeguards. Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. I'm Ryan with The Lifeguards and you can follow us at YouTube, on Facebook or thelifeguards.net. Please check us out, please subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.